Today's topic is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and how, thanks to C.S. Lewis, I now understand book burning a little bit better. Not that I approve of it anymore, but I do understand it. I love The Chronicles of Narnia a lot. And a lot of that is nostalgia because I really liked them when I was small and because they feel like home to me because Narnia is very much like Northern Ireland because C.S. Lewis was from Northern Ireland. This was his grandfather's church. This is a lion. This was his house. Though now that I'm older I side out the stereotypes a lot more. The plot of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe goeth thusly. Once upon a time there were four siblings who were evacuated from London during the Blitz. They are sent to a country house where an old professor lives and one day the youngest, Lucy, discovers that there is a world which can be got to through a wardrobe, has tea with a fawn, and discovers that the world is magical, but also dangerous because the queen who rules it is at least 14 kinds of awful. Her older brothers and sister don't believe her about the magic world, particularly because it's not there all the time. Then Edmund, the third child, finds his way in and takes up with the White Witch, illegitimate Queen of Narnia, and then pretends he didn't because he's a little twerp. All the kids end up in Narnia, they learn that there's a prophecy and also that the mysterious Aslan is apparently on the move. Edmund betrays his siblings, turns out this was a bad idea. Aslan is giant lion slash Jesus allegory, he dies in Edmund's place. Resurrection thankfully doesn't take three days because there's a battle to be fought. The good guys win, the Pevensies are crowned kings and queens of Narnia, they reign for quite a few years by the looks of things, and then suddenly one day they're out hunting for a stag that grants wishes and bam, they're back in their child bodies in England and no time has passed. The end. Or is it? Spoiler, there are six other books, so no. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was published in 1950 and it's the best known of the entirety of the Narnia series. It's also, as I used to tell people when I was a tiny Narnia hipster, the second book chronologically because The Magician's Nephew is about the creation of Narnia. Still, I'm of the opinion that if you're going to start reading the Narnia books from scratch, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is a good place to start because it's the most satisfying introduction to the world and to Aslan. But if I'm honest, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is probably my least favourite in the Narnia series simply due to overexposure. Because once upon a time, in the 1980s, the BBC made an adaptation of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and I have watched it endlessly. There have been a lot of adaptations for stage and screen and radio and audiobook and there have been a lot of adaptations. But I watched the BBC one so many times during my childhood that the words have lost all meaning. And so I liked the relatively recent Disney version because it felt like I was coming back to Narnia with fresh eyes. While they kept most of the major plot elements in, they also changed things around a bit and it freshened it up for me in a way that I hadn't quite anticipated. But see, you're wondering what this has to do with book burning? so I should probably explain. C.S. Lewis, you may or may not know, was one of the foremost English-speaking Christian apologists of the 20th century. He grew up in Northern Ireland, like I said there's a reason Narnia feels like home to me, moved to Oxford, became a Don, became a Christian, largely due to the friendship of one J.R.R. Tolkien. You might have heard of him. Maybe. And wrote a lot of stuff. And that stuff included The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which is sort of a Christian allegory. Lewis didn't think of it as an allegory. He described it as being about how the story of God and Jesus might play out in a world not our own. But, you know, the Christian parallels are most definitely deliberate. And that will get you critics who will tell you that not only do your books suck, but you are a propagandist. Not like me, Philip Pullman. To be scrupulously fair to Philip Pullman though, at least he criticises things about the books which are actually there. I read a lot of articles, both positive and negative, about C.S. Lewis before I wrote this episode and it amazed me how many of those articles contained facts about C.S. Lewis which were just incorrect. In the screw tape letters there's a bit about a milk cow and blah blah sexual overtones and blah blah C.S. Lewis hated women. There is, th there is nothing about cows in the screw tape letters this weird psychosexual overtone which the author has ascribed to Lewis's writing in the screw tape letters just doesn't exist at all. I mean it's not like there aren't legitimate things to criticize about C.S. Lewis or the Narnia books or Lewis's writings in general. Sorry, right, book burning. I know that it's terribly popular to laugh at people who burn children's books because my goodness what are they teaching the children these days and Harry Potter is witchcraft and satanism and orgies and I don't know mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together or whatever. But I think that's a mistake because they have a grasp on a truth and that's how much stories can shape us. Lewis once said, I saw how stories of this kind could steal past a certain inhibition which had paralysed much of my own religion in childhood. And he's not wrong, books 
infect our minds. Books contaminate us. Books take us to different places and make us see things from a different point of view. Stories cut straight past our defensive, rational minds and right to the heart of who we think we are. And they aren't the only things that do that, but my goodness, they're effective at it. When I was about seven or eight, maybe, I had a hardback copy of Matilda by Roald Dahl, and I carried it everywhere. And I read it over and over and over again because something in Matilda struck right to the core of me. If you think that atheism is dangerous, then you better ban the Northern Lights trilogy forthwith. If you think that little girls should be seen and not heard, then you best not let your daughters read Matilda. And if vague depictions of sex are going to warp teenagers' minds, then I have some bad news for you about a significant proportion of YA literature. Children's books, especially ones which seem to advance a worldview, which they all do to a certain extent, are always going to be controversial because stories cut to the heart of who we think we are and who we want to be. C.S. Lewis was one of the people who taught me that. So thanks, Jack. That was a lesson worth learning. Thanks for watching this 150th episode of Stuff You Like. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've been with me since at or near the beginning, thank you for sticking with me for six years and more than 200 videos on random topics. Happy 150th, everyone. And thank you again so much for everything. <laughs>